Hello everybody, welcome to Rated S for Sandwich, the show where I don't know... <laughs> Today I want to look at a game called Sacred Citadel. I had fun with it, despite very specific issues. And I want to talk about those issues, because they're kind of a brawler thing. It's kind of a brawler schmuck thing, that we're just so willing to excuse these problems with games, because they're mechanically fun. It's fun to do them. To do hit the buttons, it's just enjoyable. But we need to look at sort of what's bringing the experience down, or rather, what's keeping it from going up. So let's go ahead and do that. Sacred Citadel is a sacred game. No, it's not revered within a religious faith, nor is it something you're not allowed to defile. I mean, it's part of the sacred universe of RPGs. Chronologically speaking, it's a prequel to the upcoming Sacred 3, about which little is known at the moment. That said, unless you're super into sacred story, there's not much going on here anyway. Here we have an evil empire encroaching on a nation of happy spiritual people. The empire unleashes this evil creation known as the Gatebreaker, and while I'm not entirely sure about what his purpose is, I'm fairly certain he doesn't get along well with Gate. He has to collect these two artifacts with the help of this orc-like lady orc, and of course it's up to you to stop him from collecting the artifacts and... Look, it's like every fantasy story ever, so if you like all of those stories, you'll like this one. It might as well just be a big arrow pointing to a giant sign over Lord of the Rings saying fantasy tropes. Speaking of tropes, this is where the game starts out. That's right, a tavern. How many games start in a tavern or a bar? Yeah, sure, it's a nice starting off point, but it's just so unoriginal. So stories and brawlers are hardly the focus, they never have been, and it's not the end of the world when a brawling game doesn't have a good story. But A, this is a prequel to Sacred 3. There's supposed to be some story here, and I think there is, if I recall, but it's just not conveyed properly. For the most part, it's just, you go from a village to a mine, to a forest, to an orc fortress, and it's like, okay, I've done this a million times, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't, there's no impact on the actual gameplay or the experience. Tis known throughout the halls of Valhalla that all heroes die doing the same thing. Mashing X, Y, or B. The best brawlers take those three buttons, the inevitable light, heavy, and special attacks, and synergize them to provide a fun flowchart of options for the player. Let's bring up Sacred Citadel's flowchart. Seems simple enough. Need to reapproach the situation from a different angle? Stun him. Too many enemies? Knock him back. Wailing on a few enemies? Knock him up. In the heat of the moment, these aren't difficult decisions, and that plays to the favor and the detriment of the gameplay. On the one hand, you've got quick and fluid fighting for the most part, but on the other hand, there's a lack of variety in the combat scenarios. The best moments of Sacred Citadel get the environment involved to become more dynamic, while, like most of the game, log traps, perpetually burning buildings, and autonomous, murderous minecarts are nothing new, they're implemented well here and give the gameplay some depth where it needs it most. The boss battles are pretty fun, and I genuinely looked forward to them as they approached. The mini-bosses got a bit damage spongy, but they provided a decent buildup as you progressed through the axe. In typical style, they returned later as regular enemies, another drop in the bucket for Sacred Citadel's originality puddle, but Again, it works. Later in the game, enemies get way more varied, and there's a couple of fun vehicle and mount sections to spice up the rather uninspired core gameplay. Beating stuff up in Sacred Citadel is fun. It's quick, it's got, you got the XXY, you got the XX up Y, you got juggle combos and magic, and sometimes when you kill people, they explode into stakes. And that's great. I mean, good job. But that's like the baseline, right? That's like the, okay, you've got a game now. You've got a game that people can play and finish. But why not push it more? Push it more. So get up there. You know, get something, evolve the gameplay, even just a step or just something unique. You don't even have to, like, create the whole new system for every brawler ever. You just, but you gotta do something. And they don't do anything in this game. They just made a game. Hmm. Yeah? No. Eh, no, I need more. I need, do I need more? Do I need more defense? Or just or just strength? Or should I, should I use some magic? Eh, fuck it. Yup, stat point allocation. Blah blah blah, stats in a brawler, nothing new, I'm disappointed. But unlike with the combat, this actually hurts the game. There's a couple of problems here. There's no clear indicator of how much each point is worth as far as its net effect on combat, and beyond that, it's tough to commit to creating a character with much variety. The warrior's gotta hit stuff, the ranger's gotta shoot stuff, and the mage's gotta blow shit up. And, well, the shaman actually gets to mix magic and strength decently enough. She's kinda my favorite character. She also gets to do this cool, like, thorn thing. I don't know what that is, but that was, I like that thing. 
The other problem is there's a stat that's entirely for one character. As far as I know, dexterity is just for the ranger, so why even bother with this stat? Why not make a different stat that would require an actual decision regarding picking this versus something else? Like a cyborg eating a cheeseburger, this game just doesn't need this system. No game needs this system. It's a game design convention that needs to be destroyed. Thrown into a volcano, it's sent through a sawmill, given to a giant kraken who you then launch into space. I don't care. I never want to see this again. The stats aren't the end of the RPG-ness either. Enemies also shit swords and armor for you when they die. Before walking off with their equipment entrails, you look at the comparison screen, hit A if most of the numbers are green, or ignore it if most of them are red. Other than a magical property, none of them have any special effects, they just get more powerful and look cooler. When going to town to spend money literally comes down to nothing but numbers, not even a consideration of double axes versus like double swords, it's a little underwhelming. This sword was crafted by the finest smithy in all the land. Take heed of its sharp blade, its firm hilt and ornate design and yeah, whatever, numbers of red stakes sucks. See ya. A system, like stat progression, that's a system. You have to uh, convince the player to accept that it's something that's part of the game and that's fun. And Sacred Citadel doesn't do that. Like, upping your strength or upping your your magical power, it's just like, it's like, oh, well, I'm just doing it. And there's no goal in terms of the weapons, like, hey, if you have this much, you're going to be able to use this weapon, which has an earthquake attack. There's nothing special to give to motivate you down any certain path, so you're just going to pick strength or power and do more damage. So it's a useless system. If there's something that'll make this game stand out more, it's the art style. I don't know what to call this. Some sort of pastel comicish hybrid, but it really pops and gives them life to even the most generic of orcs. I mean, like, look, it, that's a fucking orc, right? But the animation and texturing of it just makes it look way more aesthetically appealing. As the game goes on, despite the derivative ideas, the enemies and environments get really, really cool. I've seen them before, sure, but I still enjoy transitioning from level to level and seeing the slight changes in the environment. The progress throughout the game provides a decent sense of adventure despite the story, and you know, I appreciate that. It motivated me to finish the game and even progress farther on a second playthrough. Like a limbless Greek statue, this game is polished but lacking substance, quite a bit of it in fact. And there's no, just like I said, there's just no new ideas, nothing really nifty to hold you into it or, or make it a better game than it is. It's serviceable and you can play it and enjoy it, especially with another friend, because another friend's only gonna improve the experience. Oh, speaking of experience, I seem to have leveled up. So I think I'm going to put some points in endings, because clearly this one sucks.